Eddie Stobart's trucks are part of the fabric of Britain's roads, delivering their loads to every corner of the country. There's no room for mistakes or errors. We're talking down to the minute here. But they don't just rule the roads. Their rail division is steaming ahead. And they've taken to the skies at their airport in Southend with 11 international destinations. Fingers crossed this goes on time. And the truckers are also venturing deeper into Europe in immense convoys. This is probably the biggest one, 16 truck. The journeys are getting longer. I'm going to start swearing a bit in a minute if I don't pass somewhere. <laughs> tougher. I've got to get, got to get, got to get. Uh, uh. And even more challenging. This is going to be a nightmare. Whether at home or abroad, the pressure is always on. Let's rock and roll. What's the worst thing? So fan Dabby Dozy. Ding dang do. Coming up, chilled driver Fiona gets hot under the collar. Moving 26 tons of ice on the grass that's wet. We ain't gonna have many chances to get it wrong. <laughs> Ever modest Mark Dixon leaves even himself impressed. Let's give yourself a little part of the back there. <laughs> and at London South End Airport, a spotter gets a real eyeful. This has been absolutely brilliant, all lined up like that. Never happen again, will it? <laughs> Transport giant Eddie Stobart's iconic fleet includes everything from 43,000 litre fuel tankers to walking floor trailers hauling up to 28 tonnes of recyclable material and refrigerated trucks which transport over 3 million pallets of chilled food every year. Behind the wheel of one of these cool wagons is 30-year-old Fiona Solchak. The best aspect of being a trucker is almost feeling like your own boss in a way, so you can just go out and do as you please for the day. 6am <laughs> and Fiona is already a couple of hours into her shift. I started a night shift, so in the very early, very early hours of this morning. Fiona's travelling 39 miles southeast from Kent to Crawley, where she'll collect 26 tonnes of ice for a customer. She'll then head 141 miles north to a country estate near Kettering to deliver her load. I set my fridge down to minus 30, so it's completely and utterly frozen by the time we get there. 20 trouble-free minutes later, she's approaching her pickup. If I was to say what I thought this place looked like, like a giant ice cube, fake ice cube that made ice, because that would be so obvious and I'd be able to find it. Ice! Eskimo ice! She's going to need a cool head to negotiate the narrow entrance. Half of the gate isn't even open. <laughs> With a truck this size, an easy-does-it approach is required. Oh, we're just going to, like, ram our way in the yard here. So, Ryan, right, Mr. Stobart, I won't damage your truck. You might want to turn it pink, but I won't damage it. <laughs> Fiona makes it in, truck intact. He wants me to put my rear in that door there. I'm going to kindly oblige. <laughs> All she has to do now is get into the loading bay. I can vaguely see some yellow lines somewhere. OK, I'm not even straight, but apparently that'll do. At minus 30, the trailer's temperature's the equivalent of an Arctic winter. Cold! <laughs> so cold, in fact, the truck's steps seem to have frozen solid. Let's give it a damn kick in a minute. <laughs> They can now begin getting the 26 tonnes of ice on board. Each box contains one tonne of crushed ice, and a truck's soon beginning to feel the strain. I mean, there definitely should be a big gap between the um, mudguard thing and the wheel, but he's got much weight on his it. turns <laughs> gone completely flat. Ten minutes later, Fiona's fully loaded. Brilliant. Thank you. Then we can go. Our next stop is uh, in between Kettering and Corby, so off we go. 
but Fiona won't be going there at full throttle. Ooh, be careful. Although she's got 26 tonnes on board, she's still within her legal weight limit of 44 tonnes. Sheer weight of it. I mean, you've got to think ahead a lot more now with our stopping distances. Fiona has to be at her drop-off at midday, only it's not just the clock she's concerned about. We're going off the beaten track a bit as well to get to this house. Proper country lanes and unsuitable for HGVs, it said on the road. Fiona's cool consignment is destined for a hardcore 12-mile obstacle endurance race that includes a frozen ice bath. It's now 9.30 and fortunately it's plain sailing up the M11. As she turns off the motorway to Kettering, Fiona's got to run her own assault course of narrow country lanes. You really don't know what's around the corner. If you can fit round it, under it, over it, in between it, After some tight manoeuvring, she eventually makes it through. That's him fast belt on. <laughs> it's now 12.30, and after a 141-mile journey, Fiona reaches Boughton House Country Estate. And I'm hoping it's going to open up into a huge, big entrance with some rather large, wide gates for us to get through. There are no large gates. But Fiona still makes it with ease. I sure have got 26 tonnes of ice. And that's the um, obstacle called Arctic Enema, so all of the ice will go in there. Fiona's ice will be poured into the large bath, one of the obstacles on tomorrow's assault course. But first, she has to navigate a narrow driveway. I can imagine moving 26 tonnes of ice on the grass that's wet. We aren't going to have many chances to get it wrong. <laughs> The road is barely wide enough. And on top of that, there's a steep slope on one side. I don't want to get stuck in that soft bit down there. It takes all of Fiona's five years of driving experience to make it through intact. But the organizers want her to drop her load next to the ice bath, which means an almost 90 degree turn. The ground is, obviously, we've had really bad rain the past couple of weeks, and it's absolutely soaked. Fiona slowly angles the truck around. She has no choice but to drive over the boggy ground, saturated after weeks of record rainfall. Whose idea is it to put 26 tonnes of ice here, eh? She's in a spin and stuck fast. Find out later if Fiona manages to dig her way out of this muddy mess. Coming up, motor mad Mick Leach's rally dream comes true. Just need the keys now and then we can uh, go for a quick spin, eh? And Gridlock gets the better of Boss's son, Ed Stobart. With this traffic building up, it looks like not going to make it there in the four and a half hours. Eddie Stobart truckers make a delivery every 20 seconds. The goods they transport include items from all over the world that arrive at Stobart's very own inland port in Widnes near Liverpool. Every year, 135,000 containers are delivered here from UK deep sea ports and taken by truck to destinations across Britain. Today, driver trainer Mick Leach is at the port to pick up a special consignment of 1,000 world rally tyres imported from China. I just love anything to do with cars and engines uh, and motorsport. Um, I love the smell of the petrol. I love the noise. I love the atmosphere. Mick's container is ready for loading. Time for the massive crane to swing into action. Uh, the container coming in now uh, off the train, so the crane's going to take it off the train for us. The 400-ton crane towers 22 metres above the ground and is capable of lifting up to 35 tonnes. That's going to be dropped onto our trailer now. Keeping a safe distance, Mick watches as his huge container of tyres is lowered down. Been in an hour form to that, though, in there, eh? His trailer has a lock-in pin on each corner. It requires precision positioning from the crane operator to get it to sit precisely on them. Do 
26 tonne. He's just been throwing over the top of them containers on a crane. As you can see, we stood well out of the way, so we weren't flat packed. Eh? <laughs> all the trucker needs to do before he sets off is make sure all four pins are securely locked. Okay, sorted. Let's get up to Carlisle. From the Stobart port in Widnes, Cheshire, Mick will travel 132 miles north to his delivery point, a distribution warehouse in Carlisle. Mick's expected at the warehouse in two and a half hours, where the staff are waiting to distribute the 150,000 pound load of tires to international rally teams. Job's a dream, look. So far, it's smooth sailing as Mick hits the motorway. And it seems he's pretty chuffed with his load. Nice to have the old rally tires on the back, innit? And doing a bit of motorsport again, so. Today's job brings back fond memories for Mick of when he was part of Stobart's very own rally delivery team five years ago. Basically starting off with the British Superbikes and then I progressed to go on to the World Rally Team and become road foreman on that. Absolutely awesome experience. I really, really enjoyed it. It's going to be a weird opening that container, getting that smell of rubber again, you know, from all the tyres. But it seems Mick's other half doesn't share his passion for a bit of rubber. He drives the white potty. She must dread, like, the Formula One season coming round and the World Rally season starting and the British Superbikes because it's just motorsport on the telly all the way through. An hour into the journey, and it looks like he's in pole position. We're back on the limiter, cruise control on, sit back, relax passengers, enjoy the ride. He makes speedy progress. OK, so uh, we're just coming off at Junction 44 now at Carlisle, um, five minutes away from where we need to be. And hopefully they can get a bacon butty, because I'm starving. But the trucker's plans for a quick pit stop are soon dashed. We're being held up a little bit by a, a cyclist. Bless her, she's pedalling like hell and we can't get past her at the moment because we're just that little bit too heavy, but we're going for it now, look. Mick Schumacher steps it up a gear. But it appears it's not that easy to get ahead of the pack. Flipping out, what is it? Push bikes day out or what? Eventually, motor racing Mick spots a gap down the home straight. Ten minutes later and the chequered flag's in sight. I'm hoping this is the industrial estate, if I'm truthful. Mick crosses the finishing line well in time and spots an unexpected treat. Well, I can a rally car there, look, stuck out, so... It's a good sign we're on the right path, eh? It's a Ford Focus with a two-litre engine capable of producing 300 brake horsepower. Knew this rally car would set you back £300,000. But Rally Mad Mick's job is not over yet. Before he can go gaga over the car, he needs to get into position to offload his precious cargo of rally rubber. It requires a sharp 90 degree turn to reverse into the narrow warehouse entrance. So you can't really see a great lot, to be honest. It's a bit tight. We like a challenge. But it's all in a day's work for this seasoned trucker. So we're just going to go give them the delivery notes and so they can break the seal and uh, we'll have a look at these, uh, these tyres that are so special from China, eh? With the warehouse staff poised and ready to offload a 1,000 tyres, Mick can now relax and savour the flavours. It's always a nice smell to have the race rubber about again, isn't it? I'm just looking at all them handballs of tyres and thinking, poor buggers, I used to be there doing that. <laughs> Don't miss that bit. <laughs> but before he hits the road, manager Dick Cormack has a special treat lined up for Rally Mad Mick. Do you want to have a, you want to have a seat in it? Aye, if you don't mind, that'd be grand. Oh, that's superb. Is, uh... You get that smell of petrol when you open that yeah, door yeah, again, eh, hey, look. If I get in it, mate, I'll be off down the road. <laughs> you do realise that, don't you? Too many pit stops for bacon sarnies make getting in a tricky manoeuvre. Duffy, you're still a contortionist look to get in. Oh, I know. Ah, it's grand, that, isn't it? It's a pleasant surprise at the end of the day. I wasn't expecting this. It's really quite good, eh? Yeah. Just need the keys now, and then we can uh, go for a quick spin, eh? All Mick's got to do now <laughs> is get out. <laughs> Flipping, eh? I've got a bad back as well. Great, Dick. Yeah, I'll take it, mate. I'll give you 500 quid. 
Aye. Uh, <laughs> put a couple of knots on the end of that. <laughs> His load safely dispatched. It's time for Mick to make tracks. Oh well, time to head back down to Witness now and uh, another nice Nesley ride back and job done. Earlier, ice maiden Fiona Saltjack arrived at a country estate near Kettering to deliver a 26-tonne load of ice for a hardcore obstacle endurance race. Getting her trailer into position, however, has proved rather tricky. She's made the reverse down a narrow gravel road unscathed. But a 90-degree turn onto a muddy pathway has left her in a bit of a spin. I've just got mud stuck around all my wheels. The ground saturated from record rainfall. Eventually, she's able to free herself and go forward for another attempt. This time, Fiona tries a wider angle. It takes all her trucking skill and strength. But it works. And Fiona's even left a few of the locals impressed. That was good. Right, we're going to drop this trailer. 2 p.m. And with her legal driving hours almost up, the trucker quickly unhooks her cab, leaving her trailer behind. Right, let's rock and roll. But she'll be returning tomorrow to see how 26 tonnes of ice get used to put 9,000 competitors through the mill. It's the morning of the obstacle endurance race, and Fiona's back. This time, she's brought the family along. Her 26-ton cargo of ice has been stored overnight in the refrigerated trailer and is now being offloaded into the Arctic Enema, one of the toughest obstacles on the 12-mile assault course. See the trailer we brought in yesterday? It's got 26 pallets of that ice on it. Never off the clock, Fiona's quick to offer some technical assistance. Why don't you lower the suspension on the back of the trailer? I might give you a downwards lift with the... It's obvious she's an old hand at this sort of thing. The trailer at the minute is like this. They're trying to haul one ton pallets of ice up a hill, so we're going to lower the suspension for them. Fiona may be having a bit of a workout, but it's nothing compared to the sweat the 9,000 competitors will be working up in today's hardcore endurance race. It's a 12-mile obstacle course designed by the British Special Forces to test strength, stamina and mental grit. And Fiona's not the only member of Stobart's workforce here today. Have a good one. General Manager Steve Ashley and Customer Service Representative Matt Higgins from Stobart's Crick offices are also here to take on the Tough Mudder Challenge. Got to get changed, isn't it? Uh, my bikini's underneath. But, yeah. I think our Sobart lads should come back filthy, caked in mud, like our lorry yesterday. <laughs> she may not be taking part, but Fiona's still keen to warm up. I'm warm anyway, I know that much. <laughs> With the warm-up over, it's time for the Stobart boys, Matt and Steve, to hit the road. And there's 12 gruelling miles ahead of them. Matt's putting six months of training to the test on the fire walk and getting down and dirty on the boa constrictor. while Steve's got a mile of mud to make it through. Finally, thanks to Fiona's ice delivery, they'll have to brace themselves for the Arctic enema. Come on, guys. Come on. Three and a half hours later, Fiona's waiting to cheer a bedraggled Matt across the finish line. Give you a, a big, put yourself 
wrap in the oven. A turkey wrap. <laughs> Matt and Steve from Stobart's Crick offices have inspired Fiona for the future. Next year, Stobart truck drivers. <laughs> I think we should wear our green shirts. <laughs> Maybe we can get Stobart's to give us some hot pants or like for shorts to wear or something, some little green Stobart trainers. <laughs> Coming up, squeaky clean Mark Dixon leaves even himself impressed. Give yourself a little part of the back there. <laughs> and boss's son Ed Stobart discovers the less glamorous side of life on the road. Got a uh, nice tuna sandwich, pot pie, and two samosas. So that's my tea for the night. Last week, Stobart trucker Mick Leach delivered a massive container of rally tyres to a distribution centre in Carlisle. Having been sorted, a batch is now ready to be collected and dispatched by fellow trucker Mark Dixon. Today, we're leaving uh, a very wet Carlisle to go take a lot of tyres, rally tyres, down to Birmingham to make the way to Germany. 34-year-old squeaky clean Mark Dixon has worked for Stobart for the last five and a half years. I've got OCD when it comes to appearance. I don't like looking scruff. My throat, I don't like it being dirty. To me, appearance is everything. Just like Motor Mad Mick, the thought of today's load has also got Mark's engine revving. Anything to do with motorsport I like. I'm just a bit of a petrol head, so uh, jobs like these I quite like doing. Today, Mark will travel the short three-mile distance from the Stobart Depot in Carlisle to the nearby tyre distribution centre. Once loaded with 12 pallets of tyres, he'll then travel 197 miles south to Birmingham, where he'll offload his precious cargo onto a distributor's truck bound for Germany. Today's going to involve rain, a bit more rain, and uh, probably a little bit more rain. But despite the bad weather, Mark quickly locates his pickup point. Once there, he has the narrowest of entrances to contend with. Just like Motor Mad Mick, Mark's a one-take wonder. Absolutely crap. When you're back in something like that, because of the rain, you can't see what you're doing. You kind of guess. With the clock ticking, Mark's keen to get loaded. Morning. Morning, how are you? Got a how are you? Nice weather for it, isn't it? He needs to be in Birmingham by 2 p.m., so this needs to be a quick pit stop. Fortunately for Mark, the warehouse team make light work of the 12 pallets of tyres. We've still got here, what, 10 minutes to go? And um, there's one pallet left to go on, so in and out. And with all the pallets on, he's off. It's all strapped up. Go find some sunshine somewhere. The trucker heads towards a very wet M6 to begin his journey down to Birmingham. Once well, it stopped raining, though, it doesn't do my hair any good. Dad weren't looking like this, you know that? <laughs> Mark's load of tyres may soon be hurtling round a racetrack, but for now, they're stuck in the slow lane. I'm flat out at 56. <laughs> 60 miles later, the skies begin to clear. But Mark still has other hazards to watch out for. A few low flying birds around here, and one might see on my windscreen, causing very dangerous visibility problems. Four hours into his delivery, and no sign of low flying bird deposits, things are looking good. We've just come off the M5, bang on time basically, round the corner, and we're here. So, fingers crossed, everything will be unky dory. But just when he thought it was all plain sailing, Mark finds himself in a squeeze on an industrial estate that's a maze of tightly congested roads. Basically where I am now, I've had to like drive down the street, reverse out the street, then reverse back down it again, because it's, it's a little bit tight. He's now got to back Phoebe Grace into a space little wider than a rally car. It's a bit of a tight squeeze. Using all his 11 years of driving experience, Yorkshireman Mark eases her slowly back. But the master of the reverse does it again. 
and Inch Perfect too. Let's give herself a little pat on the back there. <laughs> With everything now in place, the 12 pallets of rally tyres are quickly transferred to the truck alongside Phoebe Grace. Yeah, basically, you see now these parts are coming straight off this truck and going straight on that truck to go straight out to Germany, so that's what you call positioning, really. They didn't stop him for very long. It's all going like clockwork until someone throws a spanner in the works. Just drop him there so he can reverse back so he can get his car out. Just drop him there a sec. Basically, someone's come out next door now and they want to go on the school run, so I've got to move again to let him go out. Yeah, it's all good. But this trucker's not for budging. Can you get a car through there? Yeah. There's only one more anyway, I'll reverse it back then. Just throw it on. Well, he wants me to move to get his car out, but I've just looked and it's like, get my lorry down there. <laughs> what about in a minute? Be all right. Kids can wait. <laughs> Once the last of the tyres are off and Phoebe Grace's curtains secured, he finally clears a wider path for the school run. With his drop completed in good time, Mark's on track for his next job. I'd love to stand here and talk to you all day, but it's about down the rain. So ta da! Trucking firm Eddie Stobart was founded over 40 years ago and grew rapidly with the late Edward Stobart in charge. Today, Edward's brother William is the chief operating officer, and his son, 21 year old Ed, is keen to keep up the family tradition. I think I'm, I'm the better driver out of uh, me and my dad. It's a lot different driving now from when he used to drive. There's a lot more cars on the road. Yeah, I think, uh, I think he couldn't handle it nowadays. Last year, Ed took his full HGV licence, allowing him to get behind the wheel of any of Stobart's 2,000 articulated vehicles. Hello, Dad. Hello, How do you get on? I passed. Yeah, done. Hello. You'll have to buy me a, a nice truck now. After gaining his licence, Ed began with day shifts. But for the past three months, he's been testing his metal with some grassroots overnight trucking. Basically, this is my bed here. It's where I sleep at night, and that's about it, really. Stobart deliver to all four corners of the country and beyond. Some drivers can spend up to five days and nights on the road at a time sleeping in the cab. It's known as tramping. I've been enjoying tramping. Been all over the country, Wales, Scotland. Um, just been over to Ireland last week. It's 7 a.m. and Ed's already an hour into his shift and he's looking forward to the trip. I can see why some people like it. Married men, it gets them away from the wife and stuff, so... Today's run from Stobart's Appleton Depot will take him 185 miles south to Wembley on the outskirts of London to deliver 19 pallets of kitchen roll. Then it's a 27-mile journey to a warehouse in Erith, south-east London, to drop 12 pallets of bleach. His final run of the day will take him 37 miles north to a pickup in Edmonton before heading to a Stobart depot in Crick to overnight. Because of legal restrictions on his working hours, Ed has to be off the road by seven tonight. So wherever he ends up, that's where he'll have to sleep. Sometimes you can't help it and you just have to stop in a lay-by. Your cab's rocking at night and his car's flying past, so you don't get a lot of sleep. But as he heads south down the M6, he knows all these tramper trials will be good experience for the future. The long-term plan is, after I've finished tramping and driving, is is to go into the office and uh, start planning. As a planner, it will be Ed's job to organise the deliveries and routes of the drivers. But for now, he's still behind the wheel. Just an hour and a half into his journey, and Ed's already come up against every trucker's nightmare. Just hit a bit of traffic on the M6. With this traffic building up, it looks like I'm not going to make it there in the four and a half hours. His first drop at Wembley was due by midday, but with another 120 miles still to go, that's now not looking likely. It looks like the traffic's going to get worse. It's gridlock. And another hour and a half before Ed gets moving again. He's rewarded with a reassuring flash from one of his fellow trucking brothers. 
some drivers know that I'm a stobat, but, but others don't. Just treat me like a normal, like a normal driver. Time is money at Stobart. So just like any other driver, Ed now needs to pull out all the stops to get his first delivery in on time. Just come off the M1. Just gonna get on the North Circle then. It looks like luck is on Ed's side. Normally, London's North Circular is like a car park, but today it's flowing freely. And Ed soon spots a familiar landmark. You can just see Wembley over to my right. That's where we drop in. Isn't far from there. Ed pulls up alongside the home of British football, but he's got a way to go before he scores a goal. First, there's a tight 180-degree turn to navigate. His £100,000 truck and curtain-side trailer are just inches away from the fence. Ed moves in for a second attempt. Luckily, a foreman's on hand to stop the traffic. Ed's given himself enough of an angle, and finally, he's got it in the back of the net. Got there in the end. <laughs> just took it, just took it a bit tight the first time. Ed may have made it in, but he learns patience comes with the job. Uh, I've been here about, about 50 minutes now. If I'm here a long time, it means I'll be late for my next draw, and then I'll be late for my collection. The novice tramper has an agonising wait before he finally gets the nod to unload. We've been waiting about an hour and a half now, so hopefully he'll get it off quick and we can get back on the road. Drop completed. Ed's now lost almost two precious hours. He heads off to his second port of call, but Steady Ed's still feeling optimistic. Hopefully, if we get to the next drop fairly sharpish, we might just be able to get back on time. As he makes track south over the Thames, Ed's got his work cut out to win back time. But the hectic London traffic is no ride in the park. It's these demands of the job that Ed believes the fairer sex is not quite up to. Trucking is very much a man's thing to do. Some of the female truckers, they're good drivers, but I just think women in general aren't great drivers. Ed's made it to his second drop, and the 12 pallets of bleach are offloaded in record time. That went really well, in and out in 20 minutes. He's made up some time, but not enough to make it to the Stobart depot in Crick, where he planned to spend the night. Hello? Hey, there, don't you get up? Hi, man. Yeah, not too bad. It means Ed's planners had to have a rethink. My work's been changed so that I'm not in as much of a rush. Ed's been redirected to a Stobart depot in Essex, and after 268 miles, the weary young tramper finally arrives, just as the sun is setting. Just got to the every depot now. Just going to park up and uh, stop here for the night. Stobart have 20 truckers depots like this, strategically placed all across the country. It's somewhere for trampers to get a shower and hopefully a quiet night's sleep. One thing they're not equipped with, however, are cordon bleu restaurants. First thing I usually do is just, uh, just go and get some food. So I'm, so I'm off to the shops. Fortunately, though, Ed's found himself some tasty trampers' treats. We've got a uh, nice tuna sandwich. Pot pie, two samosas. So that's my tea for the night. Looks like the 21-year-old could be inching his way to one of those famous truckers' paunches. It's all I could find, really. So you just got to just got to have what you can uh, what you can get your hands on. Gourmet dining over. It's time for Ed to tuck in for the night. It's half seven. Ready for bed. Got an early early morning, so I have to get get in bed early. These early starts may not be every 21-year-old's idea of fun, but Ed's got his sights set on the long term. 
It's not the most glamorous lifestyle in the world. It would be a great thing to know every aspect of the business from the bottom to the top. So this, uh, this is great experience. It's a family tradition and uh, it's just uh, really good to keep a family tradition going. Coming up, bank holiday mayhem hits Stobart South End Airport. The whole baggage system has gone down. Stobart are proud of their reputation as experts in moving goods. They now hope to do the same moving people. In 2008, they bought London South End Airport. Since then, Stobart have invested over £100 million, building a brand new railway station and a state-of-the-art terminal, which opened in February 2012. It's exciting times. I think it's, it's, we're really pleased that the airport's come together in such a short period of time and been able to have operator like EasyJet and Aer Lingus on board. Over 80 flights a week to 11 destinations and an estimated one million passengers are expected to pass through the terminal in its first year. Early morning, and a busy bank holiday weekend is going to be a big test for the airport's crew. On duty today to make sure things keep running smoothly is duty manager Yvonne Jakins. It's very quiet at the moment, but I reckon another half an hour, 45 minutes, completely different place. Having been part of the Stobart team here for the last six months, Yvonne's a seasoned pro at handling the holiday crowds, and there's nothing she'd rather be doing. I love my job. It's great, I get paid to basically chat to people all day. When are you getting married? Next week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who's this that ringtone? Good Lord. Sorry. On duty, darling, do have to answer. London South End, Yvonne speaking. It's mid-morning, and the terminal is quickly filling up. In the bar upstairs, there's a stag and hen party that's caught Yvonne's eye. Stag party going where? But this stag hasn't left his hen at home. You, you wouldn't be marrying um, somebody not too far from us, would you? Good Lord. His and hers, stag and hen. I've worked in aviation for 20 years, and I don't think there's ever been stag and hen at the same airport at the same time. With the alcohol flowing freely, things could easily get out of hand. It's Yvonne's job to make sure they don't. I just need to make sure that the guys don't drink too much, because it can. Oh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll make sure they're OK. Don't, okay. Worry, don't, don't, don't worry, no, I'll make sure they're OK. Because the airline will ask us to offer All right, yeah, no, we, we won't we won't drink too much. If they are considered to be too drunk to travel, then they'll be offloaded. It's basically just, you know, enjoy yourselves, but just kind of keep a lid on it, really. But while Yvonne keeps order in the terminal... The more preparation you do here, the quicker the process is. Out on the tarmac, a specialist team is keeping the wheels turning. Where there's Stobart, there's trucks, even at an airport. London South End's ground staff rely on a fleet of specialist Stobart mini trucks. Each vehicle has its own unique part to play in the operation and are all wrapped and christened with their own names. All their fleet of vehicles here are all named after ladies, just like the early Sobon trucks. The majority of them are named after the female staff in the offices and other parts of the airport. Vehicles in this fleet include waste extractor Lou Ease who's fitted with a tank capable of holding over 1,300 litres of unwanted effluent. Electric baggage tractor Petra is used to transport up to 20 tonnes of passenger luggage to the plane, while Leslie has a 9-metre conveyor belt for loading around 13 bags per minute. The hard work is done by 10-tonne taxiing tug Tracy, who's capable of pushing up to 150 tonnes of aeroplane out onto the runway. It's now early afternoon, and the fleet are flat out to get a packed holiday flight turned round on time. So it. A member of the fleet with an important job is freshwater machine Flo, who comes equipped with a 2200 litre tank. Operated by J Crew, it replenishes the aircraft's water supply at a rate of up to 91 litres a minute.
It's always attached to the hose first before opening it. A lesson well learned. I'm going to go and dry off before I come out and do the next plane and get probably wet again. The Stobart Mini Fleet and her crew make short work of turning the plane around in just 24 minutes. Inside the terminal, duty manager Yvonne is handling a tricky case. The whole baggage system has gone down, so we can't check bags in. If we can't check bags in, we can't screen them. If we can't screen them, we're going to have to go to contingency. It's a nightmare scenario for Yvonne. She needs to get the carousel moving to avoid delays. When you check your bags in, they come onto this belt and then they go through and they're screened in a secure location. That system has gone down. What we're doing now is closing everything down and doing a hard reboot. A malfunctioning carousel would mean having to manually check each passenger's bag and have a knock-on effect for the rest of the bank holiday flights. It causes us quite considerable problems. We can't screen the bags then um, we can't get them airside. Meanwhile, outside, there's one person who's fortunately come baggage-free. Seasoned Stobart truck spotter Craig Dalrymple has travelled all the way from Carlisle, hoping to catch a glimpse of the airport's new fleet. I started getting into Stobart 15 years ago when my daughter was younger. She was restless in the back of the car, so I got to count the green lollies on the road. And it's just snowball from there. Today, Craig's in spotting heaven. He's clocked the Stobart mini fleet. His timing's perfect. He's caught the trucks lined up, ready for action. This has been absolutely brilliant. I don't think anybody's got every single one, and they definitely won't have them all lined up like that. I only wanted one or two, but that is... It'll never happen again, will it? <laughs> and it's not just the spotter who's happy. Duty manager Yvonne has also come up trumps. The reboot worked, and the baggage carousel is back up and running. Excellent. Looks like we're in business. What happened? It just locked out. So... It, it locked out? OK. Very relieved. It's probably, in terms of the operation, probably one of the worst things that can happen. And worst case scenario means searching them by hand. Well, you don't want to do that. But it looks like Yvonne may have spoken too soon. Hold on. Just when she thought things were back on track, the carousel has other ideas. Oh, bugger. This time, Yvonne's taking a hands and legs on approach. Hang on. Let me get off first. <laughs> It didn't stop because I was on it. The magic hand of a woman with 20 years' experience of troubleshooting has done the trick. So, panic over, we've got it free, happy days. Fingers crossed, they're going grey by the day. Minutes, second. With a busy day almost under her belt, there's just the last flights to see off. Pirates of the Mediterranean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Hello. Yeah. That's why I'm a junior manager. <laughs> Now. Good luck. Cheers, yeah, if he makes it back in one piece, I'll be surprised. <sighs> Have a great time. All the remaining passengers should make their way to gate number two as the flight is shortly departing. Thank you. We've done well, I think, this afternoon to say that all flights were packed. All of them, no spare seats, no room left at the inn. So we've had a really busy afternoon, but apart from a few hiccups, it's gone really well. Mission accomplished. Stobart's busy bank holiday has been a big success. Next time on Eddie Stobart Trucks and Trailers, it's loading hell for waste warrior Tim Fox. But my baby's throwing stuff in there. Trucker Ashley Maddox gets a rude awakening. <laughs> it's at least said you'd be doing this at 8 o'clock on a Sunday morning. <laughs> And Mark Dixon decides to go all upmarket. We're not lorry drivers, we're steering wheel attendants. 